Hello, Sparu. And thank you so much for meeting tonight. Thank you for being here with me. To start, could you please tell us who you are more exactly? We are from mostly planets Erra and Temer that are revolving around the sun Taigeta. In the Messiah 45, M45 star system Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. That is 422 light years away. We are a task force of nearly 18,000 Taigetans in several ships. What dimension are you from? We come from the fifth density. We prefer to call it densities than dimensions. However, all outside Earth is fifth density anyway. It's only Earth that is artificially kept in the super dense third density. The normal universe is all fifth density. Having said that, we don't observe those densities as people on Earth do. We observe everything as a whole. One gradient of softly raising frequencies, not separate densities, as if they had a wall between them. Those ideas are an Earth concept only. You said you are about 18,000 Taigetans in several ships. Are you in the orbit of planet Earth permanently? Or moving around between various places? And how far from Earth are you stationed? The ships are placed on several orbit height, depending on the individual task of each ship. This one is at 490,000 kilometers orbit. The big ones are mostly stationary. The smaller ones are moving all over the place. What are the tasks of these different ships? Some ships are command and control, from where everything is monitored, organized and controlled. Leadership is in them. There are two such ships. This is one of them. Others are dedicated to enforce the blockade. One of them is a science ship. And there are also several smaller agile ships to do multiple tasks. And then there are also the most numerous. These are shuttles to go to and from the ships. These are mostly discoidal or box-shaped. Can you expand on what you mean by ships that are dedicated to enforce the blockade? We stop ships from leaving Earth or from going into Earth without a clear motive to do so. This to prevent hostile forces from entering and reinforcing the negative ones on Earth. The blockade is enforced mostly by three races. Taigetans in command and control, Alphratans from Alpha Centauri, and Antarians. Are the small moving ships the ones that can be seen by us here mostly? The so-called UFOs? Yes. And then you said you monitor ships going in and out. What about the secret space program ships? Have they left the Earth as they claim they have? They bypassed your blockade? There are many ships. Some are in areas like S4, Area 51. But most of the big ones are on the moon and under Federation control. The US space program has lost all its large ships. Does it mean at some point they did leave Earth? Yes, they did. In the 60s all the way up to the year 2008, when Asket knocked them all out in a space battle, captured them. Okay, you said you stop ships leaving Earth. 
What ships leave Earth? Are you referring to SSP ones? Some of the remaining ones are SSP. Others are reptilian or tall white or maitre, tall gray ships. There is a lot of traffic here. Okay, let's leave SSP for another topic then, as it is a big one too. You said everything around Earth is fifth density. Are your ships in the fifth density too, when they are close to Earth? Everything outside Earth is in fifth density. How far out from Earth does it begin to be fifth density? The Van Allen belts mark the barrier. How can we see those ships if they are in the fifth? Or are they below the Van Allen belts? I have a problem describing them here. They are fighter ships, and I am reluctant to call them like that because they sound very belligerent. And yes, many are below the belts. Many are on the surface landed or a low-level flight, and all variants in between. When ufologists say they saw a plasma ship, it's not the ship itself what they are seeing. It's the ionization that occurs in the atmosphere when the presence of a starship's engine superheats and ionizes the air's molecules. In short, what they are seeing is the ship's exhaust pipe. This is the Black Knight satellite. There are 19 of these. They are Alpharaton L-class fighters. They stay in low Earth orbit nose down like a bird of prey looking for cabal, reptilian or other negative ships. Are more people coming from different places in Pleiades or mainly from the planets you mentioned? Mainly, but not incarnating. They mostly go in using full immersion technology. They do the same as we do, but as they see fit. However, we all must follow the same rules. What is an immersion technology? A computerized virtual reality where you hack into the digital matrix that controls Earth. You appear and function as a human when you are not. You go in there for a mission or a purpose. Wow, you are biological human-looking beings, right? Yes, we are. From the same Larian branch, our main differences are the 12-strand, 24-chromosome DNA. And as a result of this difference, our nervous system is different, as well as the sexual organs mainly. It's nearly all related to the nervous system, where the nerve voltage is a lot higher than with humans. And the brain has no cerebral lobes, no right and left brain, it's all one mass. We think holographically, understanding duality with no conflict between hemispheres, as it occurs with most Earth people. We also can see in the dark, as cats do. This is also because of a higher nervous system efficiency. And all our senses are also heightened as well. We hardly get tired when running because our recovery time is a lot faster. That is because of added mitochondrial efficiency processing oxygen. And also because of a higher oxygen level in our planet and ship's internal atmosphere. We are at 78% oxygen 20% nitrogen, 2% other gases, when on Earth you are at roughly 78% nitrogen and 20% oxygen, 2% other gases. We are inverted. Also, we have no skeletal problems, or they are rare, because our gravity is at 80.8 than that on Earth in our planets and in the settings of the artificial gravity in the ships. How do you learn our language? By telepathic download, 
and some practice. As we pass information in bulk between us all here, it's quite easy to learn a new language. Most of us speak fluently more than 10 Earth languages. Okay, I understand you are mostly women. Our population is roughly 75% female, yes. Why is it mostly women? What happened to yin and yang? We don't know the answer ourselves. There are many theories. It's more of a 50% 50%. When you look at it from a reproduction only point of view, as most women that are in excess are very old and not interested in having a mate. To be clear, old but still in a 20 year old body, yes? Some older women in a 20 year old body and others in older looking bodies. It all depends on what they want to look like. The reason why most babies are female is also coming from the spirit side. So cloning doesn't work because there is no one to inhabit a male body if most souls are interested in being female. Everything here is for women, nearly everything. It's easier to have a project as a woman because you are more respected in a professional manner. This shouldn't be, I know, but it's how it is. A woman is very respected in science and art circles and men not so much so, because Tigetan men are mostly interested in love and relationships, romance and sports entertainment and technology, science and rarely in politics. So even if there are many more women here, most are not interested in men. Well, the men nearly all are interested in women. So it's balanced. Totally opposite as here. Yes. What is your native language? What is it similar to? Our native language is Tigetan Pleiadian similar to Earth Navajo language or Inuit. The language is verbal telepathic. This means that individual words are loaded with extensive telepathic data and meanings. Each word is a vehicle for the telepathic load. We talk with our mouths like you do. But as we talk, we also load details to our words passing close to 1,000% more data than a normal Earth language does per phrase. I see. Can it be said that you are from our future? Because some contactees contact with beings from the future, as they say. There is no future. It's all occurring now. It's just your perception and your frequency that determines what you are experiencing in your now. In one way or another, yes, it can be said that we are from the future, but not from Earth. We are not Earth humans from the future. Yes, those concepts are always very difficult for us to understand. Okay, so you are not Earth humans from the future, not time travelers, not us traveling back in time as some people claim. Well, essentially to travel through space using a hyperspace drive engine is time traveling. Yes, I understand that. But I mean, you are not Earth people that advanced several hundred of years and came back, right? Right, we are not. We are kin, both from Lyrian descent, but we are another race, another people, another culture. You and humans here are both of Lyrian descent? Yes, as well as many countless other civilizations with human-looking people in them. Lyrians are the oldest known human-looking race. I understand from our previous conversation that 2008 is when you came here, although I understand you have been here before, too. We were here before, in smaller numbers. We've been here for thousands of years, but we came in force in 1952 and then in a much larger force in 2008, 
and have been here ever since. You came back in a larger force in 2008. Why? What happened exactly? The Cabal was preparing the calling of the people, a mass killing. It was related to the end times of 2012. We stopped that Agenda 21, to be exact. It was to start in high gear in 2012. It's slowed down now, but not off yet, unfortunately. Does it have to do with the New World Order agenda? Elimination of human population, etc.? Yes, it's part of the New World Order. Okay, wow, so you came back for that. Now, what do you mean the end times? I understood that 2012 and all that only meant the ascension process. In reality, it is an ascension process, as you said. The problem is that the Cabal used the 9-11-2001 as a start or heating up of the negative plan. So, among other reasons, that's why you came? Yes, and there isn't just one reason, it's many. Can you give me the other reasons of why you are here? Solving the problems of Earth is not something we can do from outside. It has to be done from inside. So what we do is to point things out to people, so they will, in turn, see more. Investigate on their own until a tipping point in consciousness is achieved. And then things will start to turn towards the positive. And you don't have to awaken the masses, don't worry about that. All you need is to awaken a key core of people. The rest will follow. And they will follow because they are not even real people, but manifestations within the mind of the few real people. We are on a massive contact campaign now to give information that will resonate with some people. It may not resonate with most, but it doesn't need to. All we need is to activate a few key people. Then a chain in reaction will occur. But after it resonates with them, is that the purpose of the contact? Just for it to resonate? The resonance is enough? As it resonates, it fulfilled. It makes those key people understand who they are. They will be in alignment with their true self and will start to manifest a different reality for themselves and therefore for the rest of humanity or for the world. As they manifest, they change the world. They terraform. Those key people are manifesting all the reality you see. What I mean is that if you have 7,500,000 key people and they all understand what's going on, then they will manifest a new reality for all, because the remainder of the population on Earth is just more matrix. As they are just more matrix, they are the product of the manifestation of those mentioned key people. We, or anyone else, cannot come into Earth shooting at all the negatives and cleaning the place, setting a new holographic government up, and all because it won't last. It won't last because it has been done that way before, with horrible results. People tend to make us into deities we are not. We are messengers. That's the very meaning of the word angels. And for hundreds, if not thousands of years, they've been pinning that angel thing on us over and over again. That's because the people of Earth are brought up that way, to look for a parent to take care of them. And in a way that could be used to describe us versus humans. We are a race who is self-responsible. Therefore, we are adults. 
The humans, on the other hand, don't know how to be responsible. The people of the Earth have to be told what to think, what's right and what's wrong, who to listen to. First, the father and mother, then the teachers in school, then the bosses at their jobs, and the priests, and the politicians. They are guided all the time and don't know how to make their own decisions. They are in a hive mind, at least most of them. So they must learn how to grow up, be self-responsible. The humans must be the ones who transcend the oppressors. Not us. We don't need the credit. We know who and what we are. The humans must do the work. But going back to why we are here exactly now. We are here to help and aid the liberation of souls and minds on Earth. We are also here to aid and study the ascension of Earth from a scientific point of view. And many of us come here for personal reasons as well. Apart from that, but related, we are here to place star seeds on the surface to aid the awakening of humankind from the inside. The ones who want to go in. Then to monitor find and bring them back home once they have fulfilled their task. I see. And it can be done from your planet? It can and is, but it's faster and much more comfortable to do so from a ship in orbit. The main problem with doing so from the planets is because there is a significant 4.5 to 1 time slip ratio. That is, for each day in our planet, 108 hours have passed on Earth. Four days, 12 hours for each day on our planets. Is this the same time ratio for you now in the orbit? No. From here, time is only five minutes slower per day. If I had a watch and I synchronized it with yours, tomorrow mine will be five minutes slower than yours. Day after, it will be ten minutes slower, and so on. But you are still in a fifth density up there in the orbit, so shouldn't it be the same as on your planets? No, time is relative to each person. It is not a universal constant, as Einstein wrongly claims it is. Time in a planet is the average of the perception of the entire population inside it. So it has nothing to do with densities? No, only because densities are tied to consciousness. Time is a product or a perception of each individual consciousness in itself is non-existent. Okay, you say that the time is only the perception within the consciousness of the people residing in the given world density. Is that why your time in the orbit is so similar to ours here? Because you are closer to the 3D and our consciousness affects you there? Correct. And also because we are coordinating with you and with Earth events. So our collective perception of time is similar from here in orbit. Hmm, okay. Is there another reason you are here? You said it is to help us ascend. But is it important for you that we ascend? Or is your helping us purely altruistic? The question is why? The deeper why? Is it perhaps that our presence in 5D is needed for some reason? The real population of Earth is made of star seeds, even if they have been on Earth several or thousands of incarnations. They are all star seeds, because they don't originate on Earth. They are source. So essentially, the real people on Earth are us, all our family. 
and we cannot be truly free if someone else is oppressed. Also, many of us are there and here at the same time. We want to get all our timelines variants out. And yes, you are needed in 5D, because 5D is home, as home as it gets outside the non-physical existence. You said you cannot be truly free if someone else is oppressed. You don't feel yourself to be a free race? With us oppressed? Complicated answer. My people say and feel they carry a lot of karma. Things like nuking Mars, for example. So they feel that this cleans their karma. The problem is that the karma concept is wrong. You don't have to carry bad karma. You do only because you choose to do so. You liberate karma when you understand the why your past events took place. You overcome karma when you accumulate and process sufficient wisdom to let it all go. From that point of view, we are here only because of altruistic reasons. And you volunteered to come here? Yes, it's strictly volunteer. Mostly it is the young and idealistic Taigetans who come here. The older ones prefer other things. Are other planets in a similar situation to ours? And are you helping them too? Yes, there were exactly nine other planets in similar condition. Ten in total. But none of them are in such a critical condition and are as relevant as Earth is. Now, Earth and another are the only ones that remain in such a condition. The other one is Venus, but the problem there is related to Earth. Why is Earth so important? Because it's closer to us and to a very large variety of species, because it's full of their star seeds and we all must take care of our own. Also for strategic reasons. This is the negative stronghold. If Earth's negative forces are defeated on Earth, the other planets in trouble will also be liberated. The other planets are only nodes of the Earth's cabal. Mars and Venus, for example. Earth is the key planet key in this quadrant, you mean, because the universe is very large. Yes, this quadrant and problem of negative infiltration. Can you specify the problem of negative infiltration, please? The negative forces going in to peaceful planets to overtake and dominate the indigenous population using lies and mind control for service to self purposes. So this is a key planet for them also. Why so much interest in Earth from both sides? That's right. See it as the negative forces headquarters. And also because in other positive timelines, Earth is also the headquarters of the Federation. It's the negative forces headquarters and the Federation headquarters at the same time. Now, this is interesting. You mean we are the headquarters of the Federation in other timelines? So is it that by helping us here now, you are also saving the Federation in other timelines? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's all concentrated here. And why are the negative ones interested in the 3D planet? Or you mean they made it 3D? We. The Federation made it 3D. The negative forces only hijacked it and used the 3D in their favor. We didn't intend it to make it such a difficult place. Going back to not feeling free, as it is still on my mind, you said, and we cannot be truly free if someone else is oppressed. 
does it mean you feel compassion for the humans? Or you help just to be free yourselves? Or is it all connected? It is connected. The concept that we are all one is very clear from here. We are a very empathic race and we suffer in the shoes of others as in our own. So we do it because we can do something about the problem. If we do nothing, it makes us as guilty as those who perpetuate the problem because we do have the solution. I imagine that you can provide the solution within the limits of the laws. Yes, correct. And the problem is that many may not understand the solutions, as it's very metaphysical. In short, though, you change the perception of the real people who are manifesting the matrix from the inside, and you change, solve the problem. The problems on Earth are the external reflection, mirror of a split and traumatized self of the real people manifesting the matrix. The real people here are the ones manifesting and maintaining the matrix, mind control to do so. The matrix imposed by the negative ones. And to change our perception consciousness is to reprogram the matrix from within. I think I understand. 